Hello everyone, we're back. Fantasy Grounds Fridays. Uh, we're back again. Today we are joined by uh, Brian Holland, uh, Marketing Director at Chaosium. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, Ross, appreciate thank you, it. Thank you so much for uh, for taking the the time out of your day to come and come and do this, and, uh, especially and, right uh, now during Chaosium Con. <laughs> I'm dialing in from my hotel room in uh, Ypsilanti, Michigan, which is where we are hosting the first ever Chaosium Con. We've been around for 47 years, which is longer than I've been alive, and this is the first time we've done an, a a Chaosium only Chaosium run. Uh, mm -hmm. convention so i think it's 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 actually a great time for me to uh be coming on and chatting to you about everything you're doing fantasy friends yeah it's actually it's actually really cool i didn't know i didn't know this was a thing even being planned and then i heard about it yesterday and thought well, yeah that's cool it's, it's i wish a, i could have gone it's in a while yeah it's a it's a small con so it's sold out pretty quick it's mm -hmm. we've got about 300 and something people here um this is for our first one we wanted to have it sort of an intimate thing we, we, we've got a real um tribal and a familial way of doing things here at chaos Nim. so we kicked mm -hmm. things off last night with a uh, an intimate banquet as well we had a, we had a, a two course uh, three course sorry meal uh here at the um ypsilanti marriott hotel uh with uh, about 125 of the the attendees who had mm -hmm. um who had, who had been able to purchase the ticket uh, i think it was you know something like that which was it was really really good and uh it's it's a really nice vibe downstairs and uh you know i'm excited to come up here and talk to you to to take a break from running around talking to people and then <laughs> yeah. i should recharge by the end of this and then go back down and get back into it it's, i'm really excited it's kind of funny you're taking a break of talking to people to come and talk to different people well I, there's, there's probably a difference slightly in, in talking to talking to you sitting alone in my hotel room where it's nice and warm <laughs> yeah I'm and, and, not, and i'm sure this, i'm sure less loud bubble. Less crowded. Yes, less less loud. Less people running around. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's just, it's really good. All right. Well, um, I think just because I, I think this is the first time we've had you on the show, so uh, it, it is. Just, yes. I you want to just give us uh, a brief introduction to to who you are, um, and then yeah. kind of tie that into Chaosium as well, just in case there is someone watching. Yeah, sure, who sure. sure. Know. I'll, uh, yeah. Well, as you introduce me, I'm, I'm, my name is Brian Holland. I am I am based in uh, Australia. The land down under, and I'm the marketing director at uh, Chaosium Inc. And we publish role playing games. We let you um, rebuild the world from its essential rules and dream the dreams of dead gods. Uh, so you'll, you'll, most people know us for our, our very, very popular Call of Cthulhu horror role playing game. Yes, I noticed that in the background of, of, of your, uh, your, your yep. screen. Is that, that's not a screen, that's your actual shelf, right? Yeah, that's my. That's yeah, my, yeah, that's that's, my that's cool. Yeah, I'm I'm sure that's always there. That wasn't just there because I'm. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it is. It's just usually over there. I like to okay, I like to well, pull out whichever now, yes. whichever book is. Yeah, uh, we published. Yeah, so Call of Cthulhu, which is our our uh, quintessential horror role playing game set in the 1920s. Uh, if, if you're not familiar with Call of Cthulhu, I, I really don't want to tell you. It's uh, you should really dive into it. Um, Eldritch horrors. Uh, forgotten gods from beyond space and time here to just rack your brains it's a game about investigation and and seeing how long your mind can go against things that humankind was not meant to know before you break uh we also publish a uh, our uh, the very first game chaos you ever published that we're still proud to continue publishing is a game called rune quest which is a uh, fantasy game of mythic mythic adventure with a um very 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 extensively uh um crafted and imagined fantasy world called glorantha which was uh imagined by chaosium's founder the late and great greg stafford um and uh for, for those of you some people may not be familiar with runequest but i promise you if you're at all in the geek nerd space it has touched your life in some way uh it is has been credited as one of the key inspirations for the elder scrolls games if you played the elder scrolls uh, you, the the mechanic of you know when you do the more you do something the better you get at mm -hmm. it that was a Rune Quest idea um, and if anyone's played Elden Ring the designer of Elden Ring also credits Rune Quest uh, I, I did know that I have not played Rune Quest yet but yeah well, I have played all of its inspirations it. yes exactly uh, we also publish uh, what is often known as Greg Stafford's um, magnum opus uh, King Arthur Pendragon which we have mm. a new edition coming of uh, later this year which is our uh, our game of Arthurian legend and chivalrous knights, <clears throat> and we also have uh, Seventh Sea by the uh, enigmatic uh, John Wick, which is a a um, sort of um, very very narrative based swashbuckling mm -hmm. adventure game uh, set in a fantasy sort of fantasy version of Europe. So if you're um, you know you like things like The Princess Bride, Pirates of the Caribbean, very very high heroics and uh, 
the, the thing I like telling people about that game is that uh, it's it's so heroic that you cannot die unless you want to, because <laughs> heroes don't fail. I played it for the first time the other night. It was so fun, run by John himself. And yes, John Wick, John Wick, yes, we all know. John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> I, That's I actually a very a fun name. I'm, I'm sure he gets a lot about that yep. now. Yeah, no, what, uh, John Wick uh, is also known for uh, creating the Legend of the Five Rings game back in the 90s. And a, a friend of mine oh, back okay. in Australia is a big fan of Legend of the Five Rings. So I messaged him and said, hey, I'm having, I'm having lunch with John Wick right now. And he replied, don't kill his dog. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was very funny. <laughs> That's, that is very funny. Yeah, that is yes, very funny. Exactly. You know, I don't know how. Yeah. I didn't know that Chaosium published Seven Seas. Yes. So, that's well, that's been on my was... list of games to check out. You should. Well, uh, we we acquired Seven C, um, and, and for, from from John, I oh, probably I want to say around three or four years ago now. I may not have that correct, hmm. um, but yeah. So John was publishing it. Um, so yeah, and then he's come. He's joined the the Chaosium family, and we're we're going forward ahead with that together. So the full suite of everything Seven C you can find on uh, on the Chaosium website. Fun. And we do have a, a link to that that just got posted in chat just a little bit ago. Oh, please. Uh, Kane McRaven, thank you for following on Twitch. Um, so I think, um, I think first because we have a new we have a new release on Fantasy Grounds uh, mm -hmm. for the Call of Cthulhu Seventh Edition. <laughs> yes, um, you do. And uh, I I feel like it's uh, it's a it's a big one. It's one that a lot of people talk about when you bring up the Call of Cthulhu. It is. It is. Um, <laughs> if you are deep in role playing games. Uh, a lot of people who've been around for a long time will tell you that Masks of Nalathotep is considered by many to be the the best role playing campaign ever written. Not just the best Call of Cthulhu campaign, mm -hmm. but the best role playing campaign ever written. Uh, it is a an epic world spanning adventure in which you and a and a group of um, very just regular everyday people are trying to thwart a dark god and that dark god's many, many followers from all over the globe from bringing about the end of the world, essentially. Um, and it's, it's sort of the, the, the cool thing about it is um, if you're familiar with a lot of the mythos fiction mm -hmm. that Call of Cthulhu derives from, a lot of that is sort of set uh, at 1926 and onwards. And the cool thing about Masks is that it's, it's set 1925. So the implication being is all oh. of that mythos stuff Started because of everything that happened during Masks of Nalathotep. Um, so yes, uh, it is uh, a premium campaign. It is a hell of a lot of content, and you know, playing it on something like Fantasy Grounds. Um, you know, mm -hmm. if any anyone who knows uh, anyone who, who's run a long campaign ever in any game knows that there's a lot of bookkeeping involved and there's a lot of referencing material. Uh, you know, Masks. Mm -hmm. If you buy the physical copy, I'm, I'm kicking myself. I should have brought one up with me from the booth. Yeah, I need to, I need to pick myself up a, a physical copy because I do like book, reading it, the it physical is, books. It is uh, 666 pages of across course. two volumes um, with uh, about 100 player handouts. So that's like newspaper clippings, maps, um, audio recordings, things like that, transcripts. Um, and it's a uh, also non-linear campaign. So it has a fixed starting point. You begin in New York mm -hmm. um, where uh, a friend of your character's you find murdered and your friend has got a symbol carved into their head and there are all these sort of clues uh, around your friend's uh, apartment or hotel room that point to all these different places all over the world. And I'm not, I'm not going to get into specifics with any of this uh, because I don't want to spoil it for any GMs or players who, who want to check it out on Fantasy Grounds. But uh, well, the idea is that you can then, it's up to the players. It is a purely investigatory thing. It is purely player driven. They need to say to the GM, well, we found this matchbook, which is, which is from a bar downtown. We want to go check that out, you know, or, mm -hmm. um, oh, we, we were researching our friend and we found that the uh, newspaper article about him and it's written by this particular person. We want to go down to the New York Times and talk to them. You know, yeah. the GM uh, can feed things. All the GM needs to know is the answer to all those questions. Uh, and then <laughs> when it comes to the time, uh, you know, you, this, this campaign takes you from New York. You can then decide to go to Kenya, Australia, England, Egypt, and China. And you will go to all those locations, but the... the uh, 
order in which mm -hmm. you go to them is completely up to the players. The other cool thing is that the players are in a race against time and the GM has a calendar on which they are marking off days. Oh, okay. So the players really have to consider like, hey, it's going to take us, according to this table in the book, it's going to take us 28 days to get from New York down to Australia by boat. Mm -hmm. Do we want to do that now, even though we've got a lot of really good information about Australia? Or we have some clues about England. It may be quicker to do England first, even though we don't know much there, and then go down to Australia. So it's very, the players have a lot of control over it. And like any Call of Cthulhu game, you can fail and you can fail spectacularly. It's always fun, but as we say, it's not in Call of Cthulhu. It's not necessarily about um, it's not about the end. It's about the, the friends who go crazy along the way. So, <laughs> I yeah. like that. That's a good. That's yeah. a good. That's a good way of thinking about it. Uh, Fantasy Grunge Academy, uh, or sorry, it was actually DM Greg points out um, it is a great use of Fantasy Grounds' built-in calendar system. Oh yes, one hundred percent. So Fantasy Grounds does have a built-in calendar. So mm -hmm. it's a great use of that. And honestly, that's a feature of Fantasy Grounds I've never used. <laughs> well, I've never once opened it up and thought, yeah, I really need to use the calendar. So I'm glad that there's... Because yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to go play this now. I've not played uh, Mass of Nyarlathotep yet. Yeah, and that's great. I mean, the other thing that would be great for Fantasy Grounds is honestly just managing the mm -hmm. sheer number of oh, handouts yeah. that the GM oh, yeah. have to do. I mean, uh, the, I, mean I, I love playing uh, on the physical tabletop. But there was more than one occasion when I was running masks when uh, I came and my players, as I described to you, the players get to choose mm -hmm. in what order they're doing things. And they they made a choice that I, I thought, I'm like, oh, yeah, I think I've got the handout for that particular thing. I'm like, I'd left it at home, you know. But yeah. if you're playing on Fantasy Grounds, you've got everything you need there. It's just like a click away. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're, you're, it's just really uh, playing an epic campaign like masks, as I said at the top, is just a really smooth way um it, it's such a it's such a smoother experience playing on on a vtt like fantasy grounds mm -hmm. yeah i'm definitely definitely going to need to to check this one out now i've been i i'll, I'll be honest i haven't played uh call of cthulhu yet despite having the book right oh there and having read through it what are you no, doing right now <laughs> um because uh it's just it's all it's hard to find a group of people who you know who you can convince like yeah we're gonna play this dark scary horror game you're yeah. like, ah, but like, I'd rather play something fun. And I'm like, it is fun. It is fun. It's fun. Um, well, so, I mean, on that, you know, there's there's lots of things you can do. So a, a thing that makes Call of Cthulhu uh, mm -hmm. accessible, and if anyone's watching who is thinking the same issue, like I want to play, but I may have a difficult time explaining this to my friends. Uh, the thing that makes it accessible is two things. One is uh, that uh, unlike a lot of uh, role-playing games that, you know, whether they're, they're sci-fi or fantasy or even some modern games, you know, that, that are set in the modern day uh, but have big, expansive worlds like, you know, Vampire the Masquerade, for instance, mm -hmm. which is a game I was very near and dear to my heart, um, there's often a lot of things that uh, you need to explain to the players. Like, mm -hmm. if you're playing in a fantasy or a sci-fi world or a world with a lot of lore, you, you, you have to make sure they sort of understand that going into the game, right? Yeah. Because there's nothing more, more strange than like playing a character who's like, I'm an elf from a certain culture, but me as a player doesn't know anything about it, you know? Um, now, Call of Cthulhu has extensive lore. It is very well documented, and there's a lot there for the GM to draw on. But what makes Call of Cthulhu unique is that the people they play are people in our regular world, and the game is about discovering those things oh yeah so the players learn in the same time mm -hmm. as the characters uh and the other the, well that's one thing and the other thing is it's set in primarily in in the 1920s so if you've ever seen a movie and mm -hmm. all you have to say is do you have any idea what new england was like during the prohibition era you know you can yeah. just set it in your real world if you, you can set things in the modern world whenever you want that call is very like that that's the that's the first thing that makes it accessible Mm -hmm. The second thing is if you're trying to get a new group together, uh, Call of Cthulhu is great for one shots because it is a uh -huh. it is a horror game. So if you're just like, we're going to play through this two hour horror movie. And what's really great about that is when people know that they're playing a one shot, and they're probably never going to play this character again. They play fast and loose, just like you would in a horror film. You know, yeah. um, if you hear some knocking happening down the cellar and you're playing the first session of a 10 episode campaign, you might be like, I'm not going to go down there. But if it's a one shot, I'm going to go down there and see what's going on. And it's really good fun. So you use those one shots to get people excited about the mm -hmm. system, which is a very simple D100 system. All it is is, you know, if, 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 if you're rolling a D100 and you're trying to roll lower than your skill. 
So if you've got a sneak skill of mm -hmm. 65, you've got to roll less than 65 on a D100. So you can okay. just tell at a glance, how good am I at something? I'm 65% likely to pass this roll, okay. which, which makes it great. Um, it's very simple to learn like that way. Honestly, most of the complex rules, are, the GM needs to know them. The players don't need yeah. to know them. When, the, when it comes to you know how sanity works and you know reading books, learning spells and mm -hmm. stuff, players don't need to worry about that kind of thing. Um, so once you've got people um, uh, on the hook from, you know, that played, played a couple of one shots, it's a great game if you're between campaigns or maybe if you're playing another game and someone can't make it that night, you can still, you play, let's just, let's do a call Cthulhu one shot. And once your players are into that, that's when you say, okay, how now about we play the play greatest this, this campaign ever written for role playing game? Uh... <laughs> masks yes. uh adventure exactly and i know there's people out there that really like bang for their button what, what's the price of masks on um uh fantasy grounds i think it's about 79.99 us uh it roughly. is 59.99 us 59.99 oh my gosh if you're talking about value for money per session uh when i played through masks i think it took us i think over the course of a year and a half 30 30 sessions of three to four hours of play mm-hmm and if you spread that across four yeah, people, wow. and you know that that is a and, and you know that is a that's more than justifying not just the purchase of that, but everybody else uh, who's playing the game, uh, buying their uh, fantasy ground, you know, membership and download. You know, well, that, if you're if you're if your DM is a, is an ultimate license holder, they don't even have to do that. Well, exactly. Well, that, that that's what I mean. It covers it, you yeah. know. And if you want to share the cost, that's not that's not a lot, you know, between four people to cover that. that yeah. Yeah. It's 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 a great time, and it is a an extremely rewarding thing. And honestly, the most people you'll meet who have played it haven't finished it. If you manage to finish this campaign, you are, you are part of like the small sect of global elite, and you'll always find someone at a con, like at a Gen Con or mm -hmm. Chaosium Con two next year. <laughs> you'll find something to talk about. Don't worry. I'm trying to see because someone brought up. Uh... Uh, Pulp Cthulhu. I wanted to see if we if we had that, but I don't think. Oh, we do. Yes, uh, oh, yeah, we do. I believe Pulp Pulp. You do have so. Um, Pulp Cthulhu is a. Um, it is the same. It is the same game, but it is uh, tweaked in a few different ways. So, as I said earlier, it's like Pulp uh, Cthulhu is like a, a horror movie game. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, players can die or players can go mad, and that can still happen in Pulp. But Pulp is a little bit more heroic. Um, what I like to, the comparison I like to make is <clears throat> um, Call of Cthulhu is a bit like a sort of, uh, is like a, you know, a, a deep seated, scary horror film where you go into it and you're not sure who's going to make it out at the end when you first start playing mm -hmm. it. You know, you watch the movie and there's maybe six characters in, and you know, you always think like, I wonder which one you're going to make it out of this horror film alive. That's what Call of Cthulhu is like. Pulp Cthulhu is a lot like, the 1999 film The Mummy, starring Brendan Fraser. Oh, good. If you know that, so that yeah. is the same thing. It is, I mean, that that is a cult, that is a classic pulp Cthulhu thing. Even right down to they're going to Egypt, mm -hmm. they're finding something that it was not supposed to be messed with, this forgotten thing. Um, but they are doing quips and they are doing heroic things, and um, you know, they uh, there's just a few tweaks. You get you get more uh, HP than you do in the regular Call of Cthulhu. Uh, there's a bunch of different um, abilities and feats the characters have access to. Uh, and also you use luck a lot more. So luck is a, a, a mechanic in mm -hmm. Call of Cthulhu. As I said before, the core mechanic is you you roll a D100 and you got to get under. Uh, so luck is a pool of points you yeah. have uh, that you can spend to make your roll lower. So like I said, using that earlier example, if you have a sneak of 65 mm -hmm. and you roll a, you know, a 70 and you're like, oh, I failed, you can spend five luck points uh, to get down to 65 and pass that roll. Um, however, in Call of Cthulhu, your luck is finite. Once you're out of luck, you're out of you're out of luck. Yeah. You know, it doesn't come back. Now in Pulp Cthulhu, your luck comes back because you're 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 heroic. <laughs> you know. Yeah. You can still die, um, but it just takes another level. Now you can use um, Masks of Narthotep, this edition, the one that's available on Fantasy Grounds, mm -hmm. the one you can get in print. Uh, has is was written for Call of Cthulhu, but uh, has templates in it for using it with Pulp Cthulhu. So you when when you uh, you're looking at the stat blocks for the monsters. Mm -hmm. Um, there'll be a separate stat block for, you know, this is the pulp, pulp Cthulhu version yeah. of the monster. And same things when you, in some investigatory scenes, you know, they'll be like, this is uh, how it's going to work out. They walk in here and they'll find something scary, but then there'll be a sidebar that says, if you're playing in pulp, 
make the thing burst out of the of the wall next to it, and then a combat starts. So Pop Cthulhu is a bit more combat heavy. Oh, okay. um, I've not I've not played Masks through using the pulp rules, but a friend of mine is, and he's played both, mm-hmm. and he says it's a it's not it's not better. It is wildly different and just as good. You know. Oh, that uh, see that mm-hmm. is that is a very impressive thing though to have to be mm-hmm. able to run the same. Uh, yeah. The same adventure through essentially two different systems, and it's still yeah, yeah, just exactly. as good, just even though it's completely, completely different, different vibe. Different. Completely different vibe. Like Experience. you said, it's like you think the mummy Brendan Fraser, it's like quipping, it's like, oh, it's a bit tongue in cheek. Yeah, um, really over the top and fun, and yeah, that's what Pulp Cthulhu feels like to me, at least. And that's that's what I would recommend if someone like if people like that kind of thing. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can you can jump straight into that um, mm-hmm. off the bat if you've got the Pulp Cthulhu rules on Fantasy Grounds. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't sure if we did, but it looks like I got oh, it up yeah, on the store know, right I now. Actually, I checked uh, I checked with my boss before I uh, dialed in. I'm like, they have pulp, right? So I can talk about pulp. They said, yeah, yeah, they got it. Yeah, it's on there. So excellent, because I think that's yeah. going to be a much easier sell for my players. Yeah, well, they, it, it, all I had to do is uh, like I just have to give them your recommendation of it's like the just mummy. Say, it's like the mummy. And they're like, I love the mummy. If they love the mummy, they they can honestly build characters based on the characters from the mummy, <laughs> and they'd be right at home, right at home. Seriously, that'd be fun. Mm-hmm. That'd be fun. All right, so I do want to mention to to chat. Uh, we will take a few questions from chat. So if anyone has any oh, chaos yes. questions, feel free to uh, drop those in. Uh, I will pass those along. Um, so let's move on from uh, the Pope Cthulhu as much as I want to. Keep talking about yeah, it. Yeah, I sounds like keep fun. talking about that for hours. Yeah. <laughs> um, but let's see. What? Else? Oh, we have basic role playing. That's probably the other one that we should we should talk about for a moment. I'll BRP. Yeah. Uh, so um, I've mentioned a couple of games at the top. Uh, I mentioned Call of Cthulhu, mm-hmm. and I mentioned RuneQuest. So RuneQuest was our first game in uh, 1979, I think. Oh god, that's embarrassing. Remember that? It was a long time ago. It was before, yeah. before my time. Um, and uh, uh, RuneQuest was essentially uh, uh, the love child between uh, 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 two two great game designers uh, who are unfortunately no longer with us, with us. So Greg Stafford, who founded Chaosium, mm-hmm. um, who came up with the world of Glorantha, uh, and Steve Perrin, who uh, designed a lot of the mechanics. Uh, so this D100 system uh, that I've described to you, uh, which some people may be familiar from other games, uh, but you know they can that that D one hundred system is the original what we call the the basic role playing system or BRP. It is what Call of Cthulhu is based on. Uh, you know, it's what uh, Pendragon is derived from. It's this roll load system. Um, and what basic what BRP is so the products you have on Fantasy mm-hmm. Grounds basic role playing is that it gives you the um, the core system and how to use it because it's a skill based roll load system mm-hmm. uh, with characteristics and and um, you know. Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Derived attributes like hit points, or if you want to play with magic, how to get your magic points and things like that. And it, it basically just allows you, uh, gives you a system to play in any setting you want. So, you know, if you want to, there, there are okay. a lot of role-playing games at the moment, but, you know, if you wanted to do like, I don't know, like a like a Batman role-playing game, but you're like, oh, there's, I don't have one. I just want to, I've got a cool idea for a Batman story I'd like to run. Mm-hmm. Um, you can use the basic role-playing system to run Batman. And conversely, you can be like, Oh, I really like that film, The Martian. I would like to do a one-shot, one-on-one, you know, role-playing game where my yeah. friend is just trying to survive on Mars. You can use that for that kind of thing, rather than looking for someone who have already created this game that you just invented in your yeah. head. Uh, basic role-play BRP gives you uh, all the tools you need to role-play the way you want uh, in whatever uh, setting you want. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. That's that's fun. It, you know, we need we need more kind of more generic systems everyone's, yeah, so everyone's it's system a, has uh, like a, a, this is the setting setting the system setting the system i believe yes mm-hmm. yeah that's uh so it's, it's it's really good um and we are you know we're ever plugging away and there's always going to be new brp stuff coming out mm-hmm. and um there's you know there's lots of books you can get that are like you're saying uh that are pure just here's a setting book you know yeah. and uh there's not necessarily game mechanics in it and uh, BRP is a very, I, I think, seamless way to do it, particularly if you already play Call of Cthulhu. Mm-hmm. So your players are familiar with a lot of those core mechanics. And BRP just lets you take that to the next level. Fun stuff, fun stuff. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, once again, once again, anyone got any Chaosium questions in chat, feel free to uh, to drop those. 
Uh, anything yes. anything you want to know? Uh, I'm sure Brian will have yeah, the answer. Yeah, I'll be around if he here. And maybe he'll make it up. And if, and if you're watching on mobile or something and you you can't uh, you can't access chat right now, you can always hit me up on Twitter or at the Chaos mm -hmm. account, which we're generally pretty pretty quick about things. If you have any questions like that, we're very excited. Yeah. Yes. Well, I've got a. It's not necessarily about uh, Call of Cthulhu, but I've got kind of just a general question. What's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite mythos uh, storyline? Uh, storyline. Story um. I probably don't have a favorite mythos storyline. I have a I have a favorite mythos deity. Okay. Uh, who is uh you know so the 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 deities the ancient ones the gods from beyond the stars you know that live mm -hmm. out in space and and the idea is that humankind can't comprehend them and there's a bunch of them the the most popular one being of course Cthulhu, who is sleeping somewhere beneath the Pacific Ocean waiting for the stars to be right so it can one day rise again and devour all of humanity. Um, I, I'm a big fan of uh, the King in Yellow. Oh, okay. Which some people may recognize from if you've ever. It, it, it was popularized recently. Well, not that recently, but in the first season of the HBO series True Detective. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if you've seen that one, Bryce. Have you, I have haven't. You, checked out? you definitely should, because I mean, uh, after I tell people this, uh, True Detective, I think, is a great example of what a modern Call of Cthulhu scenario could look mm. like if you're playing in the modern day. Um, but the King in Yellow is um, the emissary of uh, this this unknowable ancient being called Hastur, and the King in Yellow is uh, appears appears in like yellow robes with a pallid white face, uh, and lives on a planet called Carcosa, looking over this lake, and it's a, he's a very sort of forlorn uh, mm -hmm. seeming um, seeming figure. But what I like about the King in Yellow is that apart from under his robes where he's got all these purple tentacles, he sort of can pass as human. And in the original King in Yellow story, it's a play. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a play that is written. And supposedly if you read this play, uh, the King in Yellow can begin to influence you. And that's how you become corrupt. He leaves this symbol around called the Yellow Sign, which uh, calls out to the innermost workings of your subconscious. Um, but in this play, he attends a masquerade ball because his face is like this pallid white mask. And in a masquerade ball in the, you know, the Elizabethan era, um, you know, people wear the, their masks yeah. up. And then at midnight, you take your masks off and it's just supposed to be like, oh, I didn't know I was dancing with Lord such and such, you know. Uh, and everyone didn't know who this this mysterious Lord from a faraway land in all these yellow robes was. And these ladies are talking about, oh, well, we're very excited to find out he's so, he's so mysterious, you know, like and, you know, mm -hmm. how ladies are. And uh, <laughs> he was in the corner. And then the masks all come off and they're like, oh, he hasn't taken his mask off. So they go up. And they say, sir, sir, please take off your mask. And he just says, I wear no mask and then disappears. <laughs> and then every, everyone, at the, everyone at the masquerade ball loses their minds. And someone writes a play about it. Um, it's a, just a very, I like the creepy sort of vibe. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm also just a big fan of Azathoth, the idiot god, the god yeah. of destruction, who just wants to be the center of the universe and explode and destroy absolutely everything and manifests as this dark cloud with like thunder for teeth. Um, yeah, there's this. Endless things. People have been contributing to the the myth oh, yeah. for a very long time. Uh, there's lots of different creators, and uh, cool. And a really cool thing about Call of Cthulhu is you can keep your players guessing by just making up something of your own de devising. Mm -hmm. Because people sit down, they're like, "Well, I know what a deep one is. I know what Cthulhu is. So if I see anything like that, I'll know what we're fighting." But if you're a if you're a smart keeper or, or GM, uh, you can you know. Take something you off know the what? Make, make your own. Make your own eldritch god. Just do it. Make your own eldritch god. Yes, I, I agree because there's, there's there's no limit to mm -hmm. what could be out out there between the in the, that True. place between space and time. Exactly. Yep. I'm I'm basic. My favorite is and probably always will be the color out of space. Oh, the color out of space is very interesting. That one's my favorite, and I think it's because it's not directly tied really to any of the other. Yeah, no, no. It's just kind it of by really. itself. It's just such a weird little story all by itself. And there's there's, there's something also really weird because I remember being a kid and mm -hmm. someone saying to me, oh, it might have been my uncle or someone said, uh, "Oh, you like colors, you know?" Because I was like, "Oh, red, green, I can name all the colors," you know. Um, and someone said, "Try to think of a color that doesn't exist." And you can't do that. Like, it's just yeah. your brain can't do it. And what the color out of space is, is this, I don't know, we know it's this thing that glows with a color 
that we've never seen before. Yeah. And just that in itself is brain breaking. <laughs> it's this is very confusing. Yeah. And you know, there's all kinds of other things. You know. it's, it's a fun it's a very fun story. Yes. Have you seen the film? I've not I've not the new one with uh Nicolas Cage. Nick, I have Nick not. Cage. Yeah, yeah. I've 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 heard it's okay. I've not checked it out. Yeah, I've not I did curious. see the there was a German one a while ago that's like oh, really? black and white. Uh yeah. Um, it was really cool because it was it was black and white, but anything with the color was bright neon purple. Oh, that's everything cool. else yeah. in the in the movie was black and white. Black and white. Oh, that's an interesting way of inverting it because obviously the thing about filming it is that you mm -hmm. can't show a color that doesn't exist either. Correct. So you know you got to by making everything else devoid of color. That's actually a very clever way. Of yeah, doing setting it. the normal is um, black and white, and then adding color hmm. for the color that doesn't exist. Yeah, um, and uh, there there is a stat block for the color out of space. Oh, in good. The book. Perfect. So, yes, yeah, well done. Perfect. Um, all right, we got a couple of questions for you. Uh, okay, yeah. Does Chaosium Con have any online play, or will that be something maybe next year? Uh, we didn't do any online play this year. Um, I think part of that is because uh, we were just so many, for so many of us, after a two years of whatever's been happening, who mm -hmm. knows? Um, we've all we've all been playing online pretty much exclusively for two years. So we really wanted to give this uh, to be an opportunity for people to play in person. Um, you know, we did stuff adjacent to Gen Con and PAX in the last mm -hmm. couple of years. Uh, I think probably, I fingers crossed, this time next year when we're gearing up to do Chaosium Con 2, um, the world will hopefully be in a better place and, um, you know, people won't have been burned out on, on rolling, uh, playing playing online. And we we may extend that to um, to online things because I understand, you know, it's, it's not a place anyone can get to. I came a very long way yeah. from Australia to be here. Um, and I would have, it would have nice, been nice to have just sort of dialed in. So, um we know there's a lot of people that love to be involved if you can't make it out here. Um, and you know what? I'm actually, I'll, when I'm done here, I'm going to go mention that to the convention coordinator. That, that is something we should definitely look into doing for next year. Yeah, I saw, I think, I think I saw a couple of uh, posts in chat throughout it about is there any, or will there be any online in the future? Because yeah, not everyone, not everyone can take the, the weekend off and, and fly. Yeah, and yeah, not everyone can travel. Wherever. Yeah, for whatever reason. Yeah. But um, we do, we do do a lot of um, other conventions with online mm -hmm. components. As well, and if anyone is, um, we also have a program, I believe, uh, where you can sign up to do a an online demo with one of our uh, convention coordinators. So if you're curious about a game like RuneQuest or mm -hmm. Call of Cthulhu, no matter where you are, we can sort of sort that out for you and get you an official demo. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. All right, um, I'm really looking forward to Rivers of London RPG from Chaosium. Uh, yes. Are there any plans of that being on Fantasy Grounds? Uh, well. Uh, I cannot speak to plans of it being on Fantasy Grounds as yet. I will speak a little bit about Rivers of London for people who don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. um, it is uh, Rivers of London is a, a series of novels by the masterful writer Ben Aranovich. Mm -hmm. It is sort of a modern day urban fantasy uh, in which people can use magic. And you're, you're essentially sort of um, people who work for a part of the police department that specifically investigate crimes related to magic. You know, Because if you do magic too hard in his setting, it melts your brain. And sometimes okay. people using magic, you know, it's a bit, a bit all over the place, right? Um, so it is uh, our our version of the game is based on uh, the BRP system from Call of Cthulhu. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a little simpler than Call of Cthulhu. It's a bit more accessible. Um, and I can't say too much more about it because we haven't released it yet. Uh, however, in about uh, let me just check the time. Almost exactly one hour from now, uh, at because uh, the the uh, editor the the the, mm -hmm. the the writer of the the book uh rivers of london the the, the role-playing game book is here at chaos theme con and she is uh i'm going to be going down with her to the seminar room very soon okay. and reveal it we're going to reveal the cover for the book so if you're following uh, us on uh our twitter at chaosium underscore inc uh in about an hour or so you'll be able to see the the first for the first time the cover of the book um Ooh, but fun. you know personally i'd love to see uh um rivers of london on fantasy grounds uh but i uh I, I am not the one to make that decision uh yeah not, not just yet yeah well we can all cross our fingers and hope that it hope yes. that it you, hope that it happens. certainly will yes please do um dm greg thank you for subscribing on twitch thank you so much um all right there we go. Here's a question from uh, Benedict Simon on YouTube. Um, are mm -hmm. there any plans to translate and publish adventures from foreign uh, partner publishers, Pegasus Press, for example? Right. So we um, that is something we're working on uh, closely uh, because we uh, 
uh, without getting into it, um, it, it, publishing in foreign language is um, is not as simple as some people might think. Even though we have uh, publishing partners who you know print the game in Japanese or in Polish or French or German, um, just because they exist doesn't mean uh, that they can just be, go straight on to um, any of our VTTs. Um, I have walked out of a meeting just now uh, with with some people about how we're going to go about that. Uh, so I, I can't promise anything and I can't say exactly what is happening, but I can tell you that it is something that is very important to us here at Chaosium and it's something that we are working on actively to get happen so we can um, we can have all our, you know, our, our tribe and our Chaosium family from all over the world enjoying our games on their favorite VTT, no matter what language they speak. Awesome. Awesome. That's good to know. But yeah, it, it is a, it's, it's a challenging thing. All the, yes. well, you would know, right? Yeah. You understand this. It's, it's not, and, and even once we've got that, you know, it's not, yeah, just, it's not we have Call of Cthulhu on, on, uh, mm -hmm. on fantasy grounds. You, you don't just go in the back end and, and tick the German box, you know, yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, click, click it's the, the Google that. translate button. That's not going to help. Yeah, exactly. unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, no. And I think if we did Google translate, I think everyone would think that we'd lost our mind because it wouldn't, wouldn't be great. They would, they would think that it was translated by Yog sothoth yeah, exactly. Young, exactly. Exactly. Like I don't I can't I can't make sense of any of this. Mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. They would accidentally cast a spell, I think, if they tried yeah. to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> mm. Uh Fantasy Rose Academy likes to use real life uh locations in their Call of Cthulhu game. That's that's a good idea, actually. Yeah. Like that's like the... real life locations that are I my my favorite way of doing something like that, and it's what I'm planning for my for a different uh, game that I'm going to run is using using the town that everyone's from. Yeah, and like set it there because then it's very familiar to everyone. Mm -hmm. um, you can definitely do that, and we and we have um, in the works. We have a for Call of Cthulhu. We have a line of um, books oh. that are in development that are mm -hmm. specifically about cities in real life. Um, so Ooh. the only one that's out at the moment is called Berlin, the Wicked City. Mm -hmm. So if you if you're from Berlin or if you like traveling to Berlin, or if you can't get to Berlin, but you'd love to pretend to be there. Um, <laughs> that's a great book. I mean, it's so the first half is uh, a yeah. bunch of history and setting information for Berlin. And the second half is three scenarios set there that you can use to sp sprinkle through a campaign. Oh, or that's cool. Campaign there. Yeah. Or it's, it's also information on if you've got characters mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in a campaign already that are in a different part of the world, it's like a bunch of um, reasons why they would go to Berlin oh, to do okay. something. Yeah, so it's it's good to interconnect all that stuff. Fun stuff. All right. Um, I just realized that I forgot to turn on my two main lights. So I was gonna, gonna say, yeah, you're looking a bit dark there. You I know it's as light. the yeah. the sun's starting to go over the building, so there I've got a big window right there, so it's starting to just oh, yeah. drift away. Uh, so I got to get those turned dark, on. Right. Um, right. So if anyone has any questions, please please throw those in. Um, mm -hmm. If you wanna, if you wanna just. I don't know. Just Why not? give us give us something. How's Chaosium Con going? Yeah, Chaosium Con has been fantastic. Uh, so we the, this morning uh, we uh, I led a panel that uh, revealed a, a bunch of stuff never before seen Chaosium products. Uh, so uh, one for RuneQuest, one for Call of Cthulhu, and um, one for well, we talked about the new edition of uh, King Arthur Pendragon that's coming out as well. Um, and the most interesting thing probably for Call of Cthulhu is uh, the, the book that we've got coming called uh, Regency Cthulhu, which is about playing Call of Cthulhu in the Regency era. So if you're a big fan of something like Bridgerton oh. or Jane Austen, you know, okay. uh, in England, it's, it's, it's that, it's that plus tentacle monsters. So how can, you can't go wrong with that. You cannot at all go wrong with that. And like, that's yeah. actually, that's a really, that's actually a really smart product to release, release <clears throat> right now. Bridgerton is like huge. Yeah. Well, I mean... To be honest, if anyone knows anything about developing books or publishing games, yeah. uh, we had to plan this a long way out. Oh, I'm sure. I'm but sure. What I what I do enjoy is I, I came up with this idea of, of getting a bunch of people together who really like Bridgerton mm -hmm. and telling them you're going to run a Bridgerton role-playing game. Oh, no. And don't tell them that they're going to also encounter oh. some sort of tentacle beasts. Uh, I think that would be good. Because you would get some very authentic role-playing reactions from your players. Uh, yeah, so. yeah. If it's like, if it's like you're like, oh, yeah, it's like, a, it's like normal. It's like political intrigue, a little investigation. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe one of your, maybe on. like an acquaintance of yours is murdered and you got to, you got to yeah. figure out what happened. And then as they go, like, oh, yeah, he got murdered by a cult of, 
uh, Cthulhu worshippers. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, oh, I accidentally lost my uh, video. There. That's Did fine. I mess up anything? Up? Nope. Oh, good. Nope, okay. you're good. All Technical good. difficulties are my middle name. All right. <laughs> That's a really weird looking birth certificate. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pride, Prejudice, and Cthulhu. It, it, that's pretty much what it is. I believe the tagline is something like Darkness and Decorum in Jane Austen's England. But uh, if you head over to our, uh, our Twitter account uh, right now, Chaosium uh, mm -hmm. underscore Inc. on Twitter, um, yeah, very, very soon we'll be publishing up the, the cover for that book, which is one of the best covers we've done, in my opinion. I think it looks fantastic. So you can you can check that out. That was really good. That's, that's awesome, actually. I'm, I'm pretty yeah. excited for that, not going to lie yeah. to you. Yeah, um, you, should, you should definitely check it out. That sounds, that sounds, it's just, it's such a, that's a setting that like, it doesn't get represented in role-playing games that much. No. And it's not really, really no. represented in like, like Cthulhu mythos stuff either. No, no. I mean, we do uh, the Cthulhu by Gaslight, so Gaslight era, mm -hmm. which is a little bit later than that, still still in England. Um, and then we've got uh, Down Darker Trails, which is our Wild West mm -hmm. Cthulhu setting, which is it's one of my favorites. Ooh. I really like that one. Uh, and then we've got Terra Australis, which is, um, you know, uh, Call of Cthulhu down in Australia, which is very cool. Um, but yeah, we had never done, uh, we don't actually do too much with England. Uh, and that that's, uh, I, I think Elizabethan era is not the correct term, but it's the Regency era. George, Georgian England, because it's King George. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some new mechanics around um, your reputation in society. Mm. Uh, and and doing what they call devilish actions and spreading gossip and that kind of stuff. So oh, that's all there, you know. So if you're a Jane Austen, Bridget and fan, that's that's all there. And hey, if you just want to ignore the tentacle beasts and just play it as a as a Regency role playing game, you can totally do that. Yeah, just just cut out just cut out the cut out the monsters. But yeah, just just do that when the when you get to the part of the story where the monster shows up, just don't let it show up. There you go. That's funny. That's good. Yes. That's good. All right, we got time. We got time for a couple more, couple more questions. If anyone's, if there are any, I'll have. If anyone's answer. got any, um, this is a great time to get, you know, any of your, any of your Chaosium, Call of Cthulhu, uh, any of that, uh, well, I am on answered. Me. Yeah, we have a, we have a, we have captive, captive audience right here. <laughs> All right, let me just make sure that we didn't get any because I might have, and I just that, that does happen. Mm -hmm. Need more vitamin D. Uh, no, I just need more lights. Okay. Um, and thank you, Bella Muerte, for dropping the the um, Twitter link over on on Twitch for us as well. It's very very helpful of you. Yes. All right, I've got one. I've got one. This is another mm -hmm. kind of more personal personal question to you. Oh yeah, or sure. Your gaming stuff so mm -hmm. well i'm gonna just because you already made the mention of masks being the greatest of all time we'll put that one aside so besides yeah. masks what is your favorite uh what is your favorite pre-written adventure my favorite pre-written adventure uh it is one that appears in the uh collection of call of cthulhu mm -hmm. stories called doors to darkness Oh, um, I'm actually unsure if we've got that one on Fantasy Grounds. Maybe you can do. check while I'm spamming around. Yeah. Just have a look and see if that's on there. If not, it's probably one that's in development. The Doors to Darkness is a collection of five short scenarios that you Jordan? can link together if you want, um, but they are um, so essentially one-shot scenarios. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, my favorite one to run for people who don't know the game. It's a great demo scenario, uh, but I've also run it with people that know lots about Gorg Philip. Uh, it's essentially uh, you are traveling from Arkham, Massachusetts, because you're looking for your friend who supposedly drove from Arkham down to Kingsport, but he hasn't arrived in Kingsport. And the only place he might have stopped is this little rural roadside motel between the between the two towns. So you thought, well, we'll go and check and see if he stayed there. And then a storm comes in and it's too dangerous to keep driving. And you you have to stay at this little seedy roadside motel. and that's pretty much all I can really tell you without spoiling it. But if you're a big fan of, I love that setting. I love mm -hmm. uh, horror things that takes take place in in roadside motels yes. or you know hotels and stuff. You know where the owners are a bit weird and the people, yeah. other people staying there are 
have, have got mis doing weird things and, and, yeah, and maybe it's they're very, scared. Uh, it's very like Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses. Exactly, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's it's um, that that's probably my favorite one. That is called um, uh, the Servants of the Lake, which is my favorite mm -hmm. pre-written scenario. Okay. Yeah. And yes, we do we do have Doors to Darkness on Fantasy. Oh, Grounds. excellent! So you can check uh, that if you've got Call of Duty on Fantasy Grounds. Buy that one up tonight. Yes, buy it uh, right now. Um, that's what I'm gonna do because yeah. I'm gonna run Servants of the Lake as a one shot now. That's great. Do it. You yes. Know? Thank you. Thank and you. And you for... could do it as Pop Cthulhu if you wanted. You could do that. I think. I think that one. That one sounds like it will. It will run better as a uh, as a regular yeah, color. It, it may do. But if you wanted to, you, yeah, that's you true. could do. But, that's yeah. True. yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I'd say so. Yeah. It's. Uh, I'm just thinking that one sounds a little more like just straight. This is a horror movie. It is. It's like you're looking for your friend. You stop this hotel. Some weird stuff starts happening. What do you want to do? Yeah. Uh, DM Greg on Twitch says, uh, Brian, have you seen the Fantasy Grounds community devs photos of RuneQuest conversion he's been doing? Uh, are they been the ones that have been being posted to yeah. Twitter? Yes. I think I have. Yes. Um, I'm very excited for that. In fact, when the, uh, when the call started, I believe I, I, I said to mm -hmm. Bryce, um, I'm pretty sure somebody has been doing some RuneQuest stuff yep. on Fantasy Grounds. Now RuneQuest is, um, it's a bit of, it's a, it's a slight crunchier crunchier yeah. system than Call of Cthulhu because there's things like, you know, hit locations for where when you take damage, you know, mm -hmm. you, just, you can break your arm or, you know, lose an eye. And there's like even your – sometimes your weapons have hit points uh, to the point, you know, like if you're uh, – someone with a spear is attacking you and you've got like a broadsword, you can snap the spear in half when they attack you. So there's a bit more going on. Ooh. It's really, really good. And it makes combat feel really threatening. And there are three different types of magic that you can use. Um, as I said, the only hurdle when I run RuneQuest is I end up with a lot of notes and a lot of reference materials. And again, mm. running on, on, a, on, a, on a system with like an engine, like Unity-based engine like Fantasy Grounds really just takes that extra pressure off, off yeah. me as a GM and makes it probably makes it a bit easier for the players as well. But who cares about the players? They'll figure it out. Yeah. It's, it's all, yeah, exactly. They will, they will um, no, figure it, it out. Cool. It looks very cool. Yeah, I'm very, I'm pretty excited for that one. Because uh, as you said mm -hmm. at the start of the stream, it was an inspiration for for the Elder Scrolls and and uh, the designers of of Dark Souls and Elden Ring, and those are two of my favorite yeah. franchises. So, exactly. and it's always good to go and go and check the go and look at the inspirations to some of your favorite you do. properties. Please do. So Please I'm gonna do. be, I'm definitely gonna be checking out RuneQuest when uh, when we get that. Yes. Um, and yes, DM Greg, it is the same person. I believe he does a lot of the. He's been doing a bunch of the Call of Cthulhu conversions. I've seen his name on quite a few that we've looked at today. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, good. We got the the link to Doors to Darkness posted, so you can Perfect. you can Thank very you easily so go pick that up. Please do. All right, we got about ten minutes. We got anything? Is there anything that you want to uh, you want to plug or mention? I, I think I've mentioned everything up top. We've got Chaosium Con happening. We've got masks dropping on Fantasy Grounds. Mm -hmm. uh, I've told you about the, the history of the company. I've mentioned to you RuneQuest. I've talked about Rivers of London. Told you about my favorite Call of Cthulhu scenario. Told you about The Mummy. Yeah, we, we, talk, we talked a, yeah. quite a bit more about The Mummy than I expected to talk about today. Exactly, right. So much so that I think I might, later tonight, after the, the con wraps up, I'm going to come back to my hotel room. I'm going to fire up The Mummy. I haven't seen it in a while. You I, know, I think that's, might, a, it, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've covered all my bases, unless there's any other questions. But as I said, if, if no one has anything right now or you, or you don't have access to chat for whatever reason, mm -hmm. uh, you can tweet tweet at the Chaosium account. Myself or one of my colleagues will definitely get back to you with anything you got going on. But, yeah, we're very excited. And, uh, yeah, if you're at all interested in Call of Cthulhu, um, check it out on Fantasy Grounds. And if you're playing Call of Cthulhu and you're on Fantasy Grounds, Pick up Masks of Nalathotep and step into the the, the wildest and most uh, rewarding campaign you'll ever run. And and thank uh, specifically thank myself and Bryce when you finish it. So. Yeah, yeah, we're uh, we're telling you right now. It's got I haven't played it yet, but it already has my seal of approval. Yes, well done. <laughs> <laughs> I and I'm going. I'm for sure going to going to play it. Uh, yeah. Lord Entrails, Chaos Team Con, all in person or virtual aspects. I know we already answered that one, but we can just yeah. Uh, it is uh, first time. of all, first of all, Lord Entrails, Mwah. fantastic name. 
Uh, <laughs> no, it is it is all in person, all in person this year. But it's our first one. Yeah, maybe. So I mean, I believe you already said that you'll you'll talk to the event organizer. Maybe maybe next year. Oh, I will mention will be... the event organizer that will do about doing an online component next year. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that would be good though. That would be that mm-hmm. would be good. Not not everyone can make it. Um. Although now now I've I've got too many cons on my plate for next year because I'm missing yeah. all of them this year and now I'm like I need to I need to go to all of them. I need to go to GaryCon. I need to go to to uh, yeah. to this one now. Whenever whenever Chaosium Con you gotta will be go. Next year. You gotta go. I'm 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 hoping to maybe go to the UK Games Expo in June. I'm really really hoping to make it back here for Gen Con in August. That's yeah. my favorite con. That I haven't gone the last two years. Um. So yeah, I'm I'm very very excited. But if you'll be there too, we'll hang out. Oh yeah. Um I don't yeah. think I will be there this year, but I guess we'll see. Oh, we never fun. know. Yeah. Well tell tell whoever makes those decisions that Chaosium said that they want you there. That's okay. <laughs> I will. I will. In fact, I will yeah. I know that I don't believe we have anything planned for Gen Con this year for yeah. for some reason. Uh it just didn't work out in the cards, I guess. But I will make sure that that you specifically told him that. I will. Like Brian please, and Chaosium said I have to go. So now it's now it's just <laughs> now it's the thing. Yeah. Thank um, you. While we're while we're still here, I would like to also remind everyone that basic, uh, basic role playing and basic magic for basic role playing are both on sale on Fantasy Grounds today. Yeah, pick uh, them up. If they're on sale, yeah. yeah both of those no-brainer. both of those supplements yeah. are on sale, twenty uh, percent off. All right, we got we got anything else before we let before we let Brian get back to to the con back to running around like a headless chook and uh so that might have been a very australian expression i'm not sure um <laughs> but yeah it's, it's sort of if you cut off a head of the chicken that runs around anyway, yeah uh yeah that's what i'm doing this con that's i mean that's that's just the con experience that's that's just the con experience that's how it we goes. love it we live and breathe it it's true it's mm-hmm. very true all right got any others i don't think so uh, but usually, usually someone sneaks in like right at the last second. Right at the end. Well, and they're like, "Oh, but my question didn't get answered." Yeah, yeah. No, I'm kidding. That's, <laughs> well, that's never. Why? Happened. Don't wait till the last second. No, that's uh, that's never happened. I'm I'm pretty good about making no. sure I get everyone yeah. in. That's good. Um. Yeah. So. Um. I don't. I don't know if I've got. I can have anything else. If that's it, let's we can wrap up. That's I think, okay. I think it's time yeah, to I think it's time to wrap up. Yeah, that's all right. So, uh, which means we'll be back tomorrow. Fantasy Grounds will be back tomorrow for our uh, for Josh's map making stream. Uh, for those who don't know, we have fully featured uh, map building tools now, and uh, every every Saturday Josh does a stream at those. That's at three p.m. Eastern time, and my uh, actual play show, Fable Dice, will be back. Uh, tomorrow at 9 p.m. Uh, those are all on whatever Fantasy Grounds channel you're watching on. Um, thank you, Brian, for for taking no the time problem. out of your your busy thank con you so schedule much for me. to uh, no, no. to come and talk to us. Flooded right in there. That's great. And uh, I don't know. Go go sacrifice someone to an to an eldritch being tonight. That's what that's what I try to do. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me, Brian. Try to really do that every it. every night that I can. Yeah, well, you have to. If if you want to wake up the next morning, that's your only choice. Yeah, you gotta you've gotta make yeah. your your daily sacrifice to Nyarlathotep. Exactly. All right. Have a good rest of your day, everyone. No problem. Bye. Bye. Thank you for stopping by.